Hi everyone, this video is going to be about taking a design that you already have and modifying it with a new feature. Um, here I have the burst uh, lettering, letter W, and I want to put dots on the ends of the letter and create a new lettering set with dots. We have these little um, horn-shaped ends in the burst design, which are kind of fun, but uh, in this case, I want to make another lettering set using this circular satin. So uh, this video will go through a lot of steps showing you how to modify a design you already have. Um, we're going to cut off the ends of the W. We're going to append the dots on the ends of the W. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the dot and we're going to cut it. And then we're going to paste it at mouse click. So I'm going to click where I want the dots on the W. We can move these later. Now that we've done that, I'm going to use the quick boxes to actually rotate and move them in the right spot. So I've turned the stitches off so it's easier. I'm going to use the rotate tool and I want these lines to be approximately lined up with the ends of the W. This one I'll move a little bit. This one is quite far off because I didn't get it clicked in the right spot. I'm going to put that there. Now I have the dots approximately located where I want them. So I'm going to the, turn the stitches back on. In this case of the design, I'm going to deselect everything by hitting the top of the column here. And I'm going to erase the underlay stitches because once I put the dots on, it's going to be a different type of underlay that I want. So now that all I have is the, uh, the final satins for the W. And so I'm going to go and modify these satins, the ends. I know there's a lot of dots on the page. We can turn that off, the quick boxes off. I'm going to move the ends so that they're approximately close to the ends of the dots. And the reason I'm doing this is that when we go and we're going to modify the W by actually cutting certain elements of the design away so the dots can be inserted or appended, we want to make sure the dots are close or the ends of the design, other elements are close to the dots ends because when you join graphics together. If they're close together, it's just going to merge them. If they're not close together, it's going to draw a line between them. We don't want the line. So now that we've done that, and we basically have everything approximately where we want it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut the design. Okay, so let's cut up the design so that we can add the dots, so add pen the dots to the ends. Um, you'll notice on the screen there's a new feature here where we actually have numbers at the endpoints of each object. And we actually what these numbers are are the same numbers that are under the IDs in the object browser. Uh, these will be very useful to figuring out what order to actually join things. So first what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, split the lines. So the way we do that is we select them and we want to make sure that, again, I need to readjust this there. Um, we're going to split each of the endpoints. So we choose the split curves feature and we click on an endpoint and it splits it into two halves. So you can see now that there actually is a new object here which represents the end of this. And so we can just delete that because we no longer need that. Now we can do the same thing for the other two. So we're going to do split curves. Now I'm just going to go ahead and split curves here again. Now I have two objects here. Now make sure you delete, not delete, you unselect the ones you don't want to delete. Now we have dots at the end of the W. Okay, now that we have the dots that we want, we can go ahead and start joining things. So it doesn't really want, matter what order we'll do. We'll start here. You notice that this is object two. 
Oh, one thing I didn't mention in the previous segment was that these IDs are a new feature under the Show Hide menu called Show All Curve uh, Graphic IDs. So if you turn that on and off, you'll notice that the graphic IDs turn on and off. So in this case, we're going to do two, and this is seven. It's kind of hard to see. Um, you're just going to have to kind of figure some of this out because it uh, is very. Um, sometimes there's so much stuff on the screen. But this is 2 and 7. You can kind of look at the other end and see uh, the letter over here, too. Um, if you turn these off, you can kind of grasp what's happening. So if I turn these dots off, I can figure out that that is truly 7. Now you can see the 7 clear. So, um, right now. So we're going to do 2 to 7. You notice that 2 is stopping here. So we want to reverse the direction by actually choosing uh, reverse point order. And we're going to click on 2. Now you notice that 2 now starts and ends here. The 7 is stopped. We don't want that. For now we're going to go ahead and reverse it by pressing the reverse point order again and clicking the graphic 7 that we're interested in. Now you notice that 2 ends here and 7 starts there. Now that's not really what we want. We want it to go on the other side. So um, we want the satin, the satin to start on this side for 7. So to change that, we change the swap satin sides feature. And you notice now that 7's there. So 2 will end there and 7 will go there. So now we're ready to join 2 and 7. So to join 2 and 7, you choose the Join Curves feature, and you click the first curve you want to join and the second curve. Now what's important about this Join Curve is that you really want to do, it always does start to stop, start to stop. So in this case, 2 starts here and stops there, and then will go to 7. So the order that we'll pick is 2 to 7. So we're going to pick 2, and then we're going to pick 7. Now they're joined together. Now, what would happen if you did it the opposite way? I'll show you. Um, if we did 7 to 2, which is wrong, 7 to 2, you notice that it goes to from the end of 7 to the start of 2, and that's exactly how it's designed. But that's kind of goofy. You don't want that, obviously. I'm going to undo twice. Oh, actually, I don't want to undo twice. I thought I could get back. I'm going to have to go just to the 7 to 2. Seven. So now those are joined together. Now the next one we want to join is 3 to 2. This is now turned into 2 because 7 no longer exists. Um, this is now turned into 7. Um, so we're going to go 2 to 3. So 2 we already have it starting here and ending there and 3 we have it starting and ending. So we don't have to change the point order in this case um, but we're going to want to swap the inside and outside lines on three. So that two is there and three is there. And now we can join them. So again, it's two to three because now you can see now we've joined that part. Now we'll do this last item, which is looks like it's three to six. And that makes sense because that's the last dot left, three to six. So um, three is stopped there. We don't want that. We're going to switch three to switch point order. So three starts there, ends there. And now, uh, just we luckily had that this ends up on the right side. So we're already ready to join. So join three, two, six. Now we have them all joined. All, all, we have it converted that we put the dots on the ends of the object. Now that we joined the objects that we're interested in, we can go ahead and reassemble the letter. So we deleted the underlay in the previous steps. So now we're going to create new underlay. Now that we have new shapes, uh, we wanted to delete the previous underlay because the underlay wouldn't have gone under these dots properly. So we're going to do that by doing make core satin, copy mix core satin. So now we have two underlays under here. We're going to start reordering things so that the letter can be stitched properly. So in my previous design I think I had this element first and then I had this element next. So I'm going to move him down. Um, this little line here is to go to that element. 
then basically I think I had this element next. You always want to like cross over your track. So the this part of the W is actually going to be crossed over by the last part here. So that one goes next. And then this guy goes, I believe, last in the order. And then, um, let's see, I believe this path goes before that. You know, I had done this letter previously, I'm just modifying it. So it's all the designs there. But OK, so when you do something like a letter, you start out with all the design at once. And then you kind of hide and show them one at a time to see that it actually does what you want. You notice now there's a jump line here. So we want to reverse the point order of this. Uh, underlay step. So we're going to choose reverse point order. You can see now the jump line goes there. So then uh, probably the W um, going back, the running stitch, goes back to the start of the design. Then we have this satin, the final satin. And then after the final satin, there's a line that goes up here to the final W. So just to check things out, we go ahead and we run the simulation to see where it goes and we can see we're finished although there is a jump line there so something doesn't seem right um, let's do this again oh I gotta reverse this last one there you go now the jump line's gone so we pray play, play the simulation you see that it actually stitches right now you wouldn't want to have all these colors be different so um, I'm just going to go select all and change the colors to blue and now we're done